that walk. Welcome everybody. I'm Paula with the Atlantic Institute. Um, today we are doing uh, cuisine of different cultures with Priya from Copenhagen and we're doing lentil pancakes. Um, the Atlantic Institute is all about um, exploring other cultures. Um, we hope with positive dialogue that um, we understand each other more and hopefully there'll be less conflict in the world. Um, we do all sorts of different kinds of events. We do educational, we do faith, we do um, uh, cultural. Um, this is our cuisine one. We also do uh, cultural creations. So check out our website, Atlantic Institute, South Carolina, um, and you can sign up for the different programs we're doing. We also uh, put them out on Eventbrite. Um, I'm going to play a short video, a two minute video about what the Atlantic Institute is about, and then um, we'll turn it over to Priya. All right. Share screen. Atlantic Institute is a nonprofit organization dedicated to promoting harmonious coexistence between peoples of various cultures, faiths, and backgrounds. We seek this goal through peaceful dialogue, education initiatives, and community organization. Our dialogue events bring together experts, community and faith leaders, and knowledge seekers to address social issues that affect us all. We feel dialogue is the most important element in peaceful coexistence, so we try and maintain several panel discussions, TED Talk events, and book clubs throughout the year. These events touch on social issues, race relations, and cultural understanding, and are a mainstay of our program. The Atlantic Institute's education events are extremely important to our mission of understanding. We want to promote socially forward critical thinking to students of all ages. To that end, we have developed programs that seek to grow the creative spirit of students and help them think about their communities and the world around them. Our Future Leaders of Dialogue event brings together nominated elite students to learn from each other as well as political and business leaders. Our Art and Essay Contest gives students a theme about important societal issues and allows them to create wonderful works of art and writing while steering their minds towards improving their world. We're always seeking ways to educate youth and adults in order to make a peaceful world for all of us. Our community events are designed to transform neighbors into friends and groups of people into a community. By associating with other nonprofits or by our own initiative, we are always trying to discover new avenues to improve our neighborhoods, places of worship, and community centers. We host cooking demonstrations of food from other cultures, work with various nonprofits to help elevate the work of others, and try to find a way to make the lives of those who are disenfranchised or marginalized better. Building a more peaceful world starts in our backyards, so we are dedicated to improving our communities and associations. The Atlantic Institute is always seeking like-minded volunteers and collaborators. If you would like to learn more, find volunteer opportunities, or just want to chat with our staff, please visit our website at www.AtlanticInstituteSC.org or follow us on Facebook. We will never run out of fun, educational, peaceful events. So come join us to help make this world a better place full of understanding and unity. All right, thank you for watching. I am now gonna turn this over to Priya and we are going to learn about lentil pancakes. Yes, thank you all for returning, good evening. Uh-oh, uh, hang on just a second. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. Everyone. 
Priya, it's all yours. Thank you. Thank you everyone for, uh, for coming in this morning. Um, it's evening here in Copenhagen, it's 5.30. Um, and the days are longer, it's much brighter. Um, I'm really looking forward to, uh, to talking to you about uh, a rather very simple rustic dish um, that, that has so many variations. And uh, the variations are, um, are knitted to a lot of local culture in India. Um, and, I, and that's why I thought this was a wonderful recipe to share with the Atlantic Institute because it is a, um, it's a common denominator that brings people from various different uh, cultures and ethnicities within India, especially in the peninsula region together. Um, Aday is a very simple lentil pancake. Um, pancake is again a word I have to use to make a, you know to find a common language between you and me. Uh, but uh, in the old days, uh, when ada used to be made, it used to be hand ground, you know, in a large uh, grinding stone. And uh, the the dough, uh, the batter that that came uh, would then be smeared on the on the hot griddle with your hand. So um, you know, so the the, uh, the pancake was rather thick. And, um, and that's how it's still eaten today. It's, um, I, I don't know if many of you are familiar with dosa. Aday is, um, is, is not quite like dosa. It's not fermented uh, in that sense. So you would, you know, you can make the batter ahead of time, like, like you know, I've suggested to you in the recipe, but uh, you, uh, you, can, you can make the batter and eat it right away. Um, it's a great weekday dish, uh, very practical for family life because you can make the batter on Sunday and then make pancakes for breakfast or for, uh, for a weekday dinner. It's, it's very nutritious. Um, yeah, and it's very delicious. I'm going to show you how to make it. In the next half hour, we will uh, take a look at how to make a tomato relish that, will, uh, that we can eat with the aday. I will show you how to make the aday. And I will show you a little bit of food history um, going back to 3rd century AD when Aday was, uh, was first mentioned in Tamil literature. Um, so the, I think it's, it's fair to speculate that Aday is a dish from, from Tamil Nadu, from Peninsula India, where I also come from. Um, and I'm a bit of a food nerd. I write about food history, so I would definitely like to weave that uh, in here today. Um, as for the format, I would be happy if any of you want to ask questions, um, as long as Paula is okay with it, uh, just unmute yourself and, and ask, and we we'll take the conversation as the evening goes. Yeah, great. Um, I'm going to show you, we, we, we're going to start with, uh, with cutting the uh, tomatoes for the uh, relish. And I'm going to turn on the heat here. So you can make this with, uh, with canned tomatoes and it works just as fine. In fact, there is, uh, you know, um, it happens that in the winter, it, I just don't get good tomatoes here in Copenhagen. It's just too cold and um, they may look red, but they're rather tasteless. So I, I actually just use a can and, and it tastes just as good. Probably better because uh, there's a little bit of vinegar in it and it's quite tart. When in India, we use uh, something called as uh, native tomatoes because there are a lot of hybrid varieties of tomatoes um, which don't uh, necessarily have that uh, tart, sweet balance uh, naturally. So um, we, 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 we prefer to use the native varieties to hybrids. They're soft and, and quite delicious. Show you this. I'm gonna pour some oil in here. I think you can see it uh, on the top camera there, right? So we're gonna pour some oil. I have I have an induction stuff top here, and my heat is on seven. That gets the heat quite high, quite fast. I try and use a measurement spoon so it's easy for you to see. You can see that the, the oil is heating up 
and uh, it is important that the oil is hot to touch from from high up but not uh, smoking hot you can add onions to this and garlic but today i'm making a simple version which doesn't need any of that and it still tastes really good and see it takes a few minutes to heat up and it's important to wait because spluttering the mustard at the right temperature is is probably the dna of of the dish and this goes to most indian food which needs um, a tadka or 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 a tempering of some sort uh, the temperature of the oil is crucial i can i can show you one i mean you know, when you put one mustard in you can probably see it doesn't move so the oil is not ready yet we will also take um just slit two green chilies so that it it gives it the flavor it needs but not the spice if you don't uh, like the heat um i'm also going to show you the asafoetida that i'm going to use uh i don't know if you're familiar with asafoetida it's um it's uh it's a it's a it's a gum from the uh, the tuber of a plant uh called ferula and um i have i'm going to take like that much that that goes a long way Okay, now my oil is hot, and I'm gonna take. Uh, it's important. And probably you can hear the spluttering. That's an important sound to look for. Quickly add the, the chilies in, add to that in, and quickly dump the tomatoes in. Reduce the heat to four. Don't keep it too high. It will singe your food. You can add some curry leaves to this. And probably need to cut a little bit more. and then you can go easy on the chili if you don't want it hot um i prefer to use uh, crystal uh, sugar the uh, salt that's uh, that's still like little rocks and not uh, you know refined stuff like kosher salt here in denmark we don't call it kosher it just sells as uh, sea salt and take a teaspoon that would be good and then a little bit of turmeric always does good and then we will give this a stir you can see my heat is down to 4 it's important that the the tomato cooks in its own juice right and we will move this to the side here to cook and move it here to this half while we prepare the um the batter for the lentil pancake now i'm going to let this uh stew in its own juice here now then the heat is on 5 and that can stay on the side Let's move over to our pancake here. We don't need to do it anymore. Right. 
I'm going to show you the, the, uh, the soaked grains before we grind them. This is the rice. I've soaked it. This is, um, if you can, if you have an Asian grocery or an Indian grocery near, near you, uh, this is what you would call as raw rice. Um, they have been, from, from living here in Europe, I've seen that you, you can commonly get a, a variety of rice called ponni. You can use any rice for this, but uh, preferably use raw rice. You can also get a rice variety that says parboiled rice. And maybe you should avoid that because then it makes it very chewy. Uh, you should take raw rice. Um, yeah, and this has been soaking uh, since I think before lunch. So for the last five hours, six hours probably. Three hours is good. You don't need anything more than that. And then uh, this is the mung, mung dal. And this forms the majority of uh, the, uh, the lentil part. Um, as a thumb rule, uh, Ade always has lentils to rice is one is to two. Oh, sorry. And uh, so this is mung, where the skin has been removed. And it, this is, it is important that the skin is removed. Otherwise, it gets to, um, you can feel, it, I think it's a bit bulky. There is another variation where you make um, a, a kind of adai or a pancake with the, with the mung, um, um, you know, still having its skin on. And I have mentioned that in the, in the recipe. You can take a look at it. That's another variety of adai. You can make that. But for this, I would recommend that if you can find one where the skin has been removed, you can use it. When you have the, the skin on, it has another peculiar taste and it needs different kinds of, a different kind of spice. Uh, you need, um, it tastes better with ginger. And when you remove the, the skin on, you, the, the flavoring that we're going to do today works really well. This is uh, chana dal, uh, which is also, you know, hulled. Uh, this is actually what is inside the chickpea. Um, and you can also find it uh, uh, labeled as Bengal gram sometimes, uh, or chana dal. Dal typically refers to a split lentil. And then this is um, urad dal, which is black lentils. But again, the, the skin has been removed, so it's white and if you smell this uh, soaked lentil, you will see that each of them have a very unique aroma. And that is very, very important um, to know. So do give that a whiff and, um, and I think you will develop a, um, a feel for, for the dish. Um, the black lentil is very, very important when it comes to aroma. If you know dosa, you would recollect that we use black lentils in dosa and it is the most important ingredient there because there are lots of, um, you know, modern dosa recipes where, where they explore on the rice varieties and the lentil types. But if you have to get, uh, achieve that uh, aroma of dosa, you need the black lentils. Um, you don't need them in, in too much quantities, so that's why it's only uh, one fourth of the total lentil volume, but it's very, very crucial. Okay. Now I'm going to uh, strain all of this. And, uh, and strain it. So while she's straining all of that, I want to just um, ask everybody to put where they're from in the chat if you haven't already. We'd like to see how far our programs are reaching and so we do an event audit sort of thing. So it can just be city, state, country. Um, and thank you very much for those who've already done it and seen my chat. And we have all the lentils here. You can reduce the recipe to half. Uh, that's what I normally make for a family of four here. Exactly half this volume. I made it this, uh, I, I sent you this proportions because it was probably easier to 
explain a quarter cup rather than one eighth of a cup. So you can easily half the recipe. It should work just as well. And into this, we will put uh, cumin seeds. Yeah, about a tablespoon for this quantity. And then we can add a red chili. If you know that the chili is spicy, use it with discretion. If you know that it, it is not that spicy, just adds a lot of color, like certain varieties like bedigi, then you can, you can add more. Um, and then some curry leaves in this. I tend to add it in so that, you know, everyone eats it. Otherwise, curry leaves are very easy to pick out and, and waste. And then we need to add some asafoetida. This is very, very important for this recipe, um, both in terms of its aroma and flavor, but also for the digestibility. We believe that uh, um, when you eat lentils, if you uh, add a little asafoetida when you're cooking, then it makes, um, it gives you less flatulence, less, you know, it is heavier on the stomach than rice, which is largely starch. So you need a little, you know, you, I have a lot of grain here. So for this, I would need about that much. And you can, you can have a, um, Blender, stick blender. Oh yeah, we need salt. Yeah, we need the salt. You can add a spoon to start with, a tablespoon, and then you know, um, adjust it along. Should I mute myself here so it's not not noisy for you on the other end? You can add a little water if, um, if, that, if you need a little more things around. Add them very little by little, because if you have too much water, then you can't grind well. Meanwhile, just keep an eye on your, on your relish. I think it's almost there.
you can see, it's quite thick here. You see it's quite thick, like a cake batter, and you want to keep it that thick. And then so you can see it's quite thick here. I'm going to move this aside so we can set up our griddle here to cook the pancakes. Start with a setting on six, six and a half. And remember to check on your and your tomato relish, it's almost there. I don't know if that's visible. Now let the water evaporate. It gets um, a compote consistency. We will um, we will chop some coriander. Now I'm going to use the the the, the leaves of the coriander. Or you see, you can you can segregate the, the leaf and the stem. The stems are very aromatic, so don't lose out on that. Uh, use the leaves for the use some leaves for the uh, the relish and uh, and the rest of it can be chopped into. Um, if you don't like coriander. Um, you can, have you ever tried uh, replacing uh, coriander with, with Mexican coriander or Vietnamese coriander or Thai coriander, which are all different species of the same plant, but um, um, I mean, are all different species, but have the same uh, aroma. Is anyone in the audience who don't like coriander have that soapy taste and, and, and just don't eat it? Anyone with that challenge? No, okay. Right, we have the twigs here. Rather just uh, you know, give, give, chop it finely. And, uh, you can add it to the, um, the lentil batter. And uh, Chop the leaves finely and you can use a little for the, reserve a little for the, for the relish and uh, use the rest in the batter. So as you can see, I have the coriander here and I'm just mixing it and giving it a good stir. Okay. At this point, you smell the batter, you should be able to smell the uh, the soaked black lentils. It's although so little in quantity, it's got a very remarkable taste. And there's the asafoetida and the cumin and the coriander. Um, the batter itself is very aromatic. Now we have we have this hot here. A drop of oil and uh, and give it a slight swirl just to make sure that you have oil all over. You can use an iron, uh, cast iron uh, skillet for this, there's no problem. And um, as I've learned from my mother and my grandmother and the women before, that when you make a dosa or when you make an adai, the very first one that you make should be a very tiny one. You should never start with a big one. So we make a tiny one a baby one and it's important that when you pour the oil in adai you don't pour it around the, the adai but you rather pour it into it and then you create a hole the oil seeps into it and it's 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 important that the adai cooks through 
because it's a thick layer of batter, as you can see. And we're going to let that cook while we um, give a moment's attention to our relish. You can increase the heat if you feel your tomato is too watery, like mine is. Just increase the heat a bit. I'm going to serve it out. Done. If, if you feel your tomato is tart at this point, uh, give it a taste and if you feel it's tart, tomatoes always benefit with a little bit of jaggery. Um, if you have jaggery, I'll show you. So. Now, this is jaggery, and uh, we, can, we can use a little bit of it, about that much. It will melt. Okay. Meanwhile, we have, we are done with our pancake here. We need to flip it, and then give it a, a dab. While your um, relish is, is here, it's ready. The jaggery will melt into the warm. And you can garnish it with a little coriander. And let it cool before you eat it. And it goes really well with a lot of Indian pickles. It goes well with yogurt, which is, which is my family favorite combination. Uh, it goes very well with hot, cold butter, just diced pieces of butter. Um, it goes very well with, uh, with jaggery. So you would pinch off a piece of the aday and you, would, you can eat it with any of these accompaniments. Let's, uh, let's take the aday out on a plate. There we go. Traditionally, we would use, um, oh, I don't know where my flip is. Traditionally, we use something like this to flip our aray, and uh, we would make it on a cast iron, on a cast iron grill, and you would use this to flip the aray. I'm going to show you. So now that the first one is done, we do that to make sure that your uh, your your skillet is tempered, it's it's evenly heated up, uh, and that way you can avoid the problem of uh, you know it's sticking to the base and uh, and not really releasing from the base. Um, and aday can be made two ways. It can be made like a very thick uh, cake, like a thick pancake, um, or it can be made very thin. It really depends on how you like it. Uh, some of us like it thick and soft. Some of us like it soft on the top and you know with a crisp underside. I'm going to show you how to make one. Take a spoonful, a ladleful, and then you will. Can you see spreading this? And um, Paula, can you see me? Yeah. You would do that. Sorry, yes, we can we can see it. And then you will take the oil, just half a little spoon, yeah. And you will give it go around it. Avoid putting the oil outside, leave it on the inside so the oil doesn't ruin your, your pan. And just let it cook. You can see there's a lot of chatter going on on the chat. Is there anything I can an answer? Um, they were just putting in there where they were from. They want the recipe and I'll send it to them providing they uh, provided me with their email address. I have a few people that um, that I don't, they're not on my list of, of people who signed up and they may just be using a different name than what they signed up with. So I don't have their email addresses um, if I don't if I can't match them up. I am going to put yeah. my email address in the bottom in here before you all go. And if you don't get it by Monday, 
um, your the email by Monday, then morning, then go ahead and email me and I will make sure to get it to you. Um, it's going to take me a little while to get all the all the things done to who, who, who came today so I can email it to you. So, all right. You see, cooked. sorry, Paula. Oh, uh, when you, no, that's all right. When, when it's cooked, it can release really well. Give it a flip. It's, it's a very light golden color. And then you let this cook. You can serve it with Greek yogurt. And, uh, is anyone asking uh, anything? Any any questions? Okay. You can see. Good to give it a taste, huh? I can taste the small one. So they're yeah, asking just... if they can't find all the different types of lentils, what is your suggestion? Sorry, Paula, can you come in? They're asking if they can't find the different kinds of lentils that you've named, what is your suggestion? Sure. Um... Now, the thing is that uh, for this recipe, you need these combinations. What can you avoid here? You can, you can remove the, the chana dal if you can't find it. Um, but I would recommend that the, that the black lentils stay. But there are lots of recipes that, um, a lot of variations rather, that you can make. I'm going to show, before I go into that, I will answer your question in a moment. We'll just put this guy here. You can see this is a very thick one. You just need to pan it down. I'm not spreading it. I'm just patting it down, and and you can do that. But remember to always put this little hole in the center so the oil can go through, like a donut. The same principle. If you want to only make it out of mung beans, you can soak them whole. Uh, you can actually make it with any lentil you want. The reason why there's mung bean, uh, mung lentil, like the, you know the split mung, is because it's um, at least this is uh, kitchen wisdom. I don't know uh, scientifically this is true, but uh, we believe that it's easier to digest. Moong is easier to digest than for example, chana dal. So that's why it's more in proportion here. And, um, and often when you eat lentils in the night, um, um, you know, we always said, uh, or I've heard that it's better to serve moong bean and moong lentils because it's just easier to digest. Um, if you wanna use whole moong, which has the green skin on, you can use it. And that has a slightly different, um, so, so if you were to do that, you would take a cup of mung, but remember to add a little bit of rice in it. Rice is very important, like a handful, like, you know, just a little bit. Um, add that in because rice is important to make sure that your lentil uh, forms a surface, you know, and that you can flip it. Like right now, you, it has body, you can, you can actually do this. And if you only made it out of lentils, you can't do that. Unless it's only chickpea. Like, you know, when you use besan, which is chickpea flour, you can do it. Because it, it tends, the, the chemistry behind it, it tends to form a surface. You can, that's why chickpea is such a common uh, replacement to eggs in vegan food. Because it can, it can resemble scrambled eggs. It can resemble uh, tofu. It can resemble many things. Uh, it depends on how you process it. Um, it has, a, a structurally, it can do a lot more. But if you were to use mung, then be careful that uh, add a little bit of rice and uh, the flavoring that goes really well with that is uh, black pepper, human seeds and ginger. So add a small piece of ginger. Um, that's, that's, a, that's the combination with that. Of course, you can, you can you know, say all of this is bullshit and go ahead and do your own recipe. Always remember to add a little bit of rice so that you can be sure that it's not falling apart. If in spite of adding the rice, it's falling apart, add a little bit of rice flour, it should help. A, a spoonful of rice flour, corn flour saves any day. So <laughs> just go ahead and do that. And if you don't have corn flour and you don't have rice flour, wheat flour does the trick for you. It basically creates the, um, the, 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 um, you know, the gluten that's needed to, to keep it all together. 
All right, our next question is, can you use curry powder instead of curry leaves? Uh, no, <laughs> well, curry powder would definitely give you another flavor. I'm sure, go ahead, give that a try one evening if you feel very experimental. I love the smell of curry powder, though we have nothing like curry powder in India. But I think it's delicious, you can go ahead and try it. Curry leaves are, uh, curry, curry powder is a spice blend of many different spices, primarily coriander seeds and cumin but curry leaves are it's a herb it's just it's, it's essentially a, a fresh ingredient so this is what it looks like when it's thick and you can see it's it's so, so the next the, question the, is how long approximately do you cook the pancake on the griddle should we make one where we measure the time i haven't measured the time yet i mean i just go by eyeball i mean you just uh, <laughs> see that it's okay, try one so we can try one we time it now uh, we can make one here all right um, I have it here. I'm making the thin one. If you feel uh, that uh, the, the batter is pulling away, be gentle with it. Slowly allow it to form a crust as you move it. It's very forgiving. It's not like those sides, it's really forgiving. So don't worry. And, and trust me, all of us have our good days and bad days in the kitchen. So there are days when nothing holds up. There's, there are days when everything comes out of it. And what kind of oil is that you're using? This is uh, sunflower oil, um, but you can use peanut oil. You can use uh, canola oil, some sort of oil that doesn't have an aroma. Um, so in some families, they also use um, sesame oil. And the, the Asian sesame oil is different from the Indian sesame oil because the Asian one is hulled from roasted sesame seeds. Uh, but you can also make it with ghee if you feel uh, like lavishing and that's delicious too. But as long as your ghee is a very aromatic. Okay, is someone keeping the time? I think we've had two minutes probably go by. Yep. Paula, can you keep the time for me? Yep. You can see that now it's released from the base and that means it's done as in it's cooked on one side and you can flip it over. If you like it crisp, give it a try. Try one that's crisp, try one that's soft. Um, you, will, um, you will discover what, what you like most about it. So my, um, my um, recommendation to anyone who tries recipes from me, family, friends, I always say the first time do it the way uh, I've written it down because if you have tasted what I have made at home and you've liked it or when I hosted dinner, um, then this is the recipe for that. Don't tweak it and don't play with it just yet. Try it once and then see, because it's, it's, um, it's my way of telling you what it should taste like. I think a recipe is also a sort of, um, it's a language, it's, there's a metaphor. Um, and then you can go ahead and change it. The next time around, make it your own. Take it and make it your own. About five, six minutes, I think. Yeah, so far it's been on for three minutes. Yeah. You see, and you can see that it's not moving completely. So it's, it's still cooking on the underside. Once it's cooked, it will, it will release. And uh, when you're cooking for a larger group, you know, if you have parents over and kids, and it happens, it's happened here, then I tend to keep extra, extra griddles. So uh, when they are done, I put it onto the other one where I complete, you know, it, it, it toasts completely on the second griddle. And I use one to keep making it, and then I move it to the other one to complete the cooking process. Oh, yeah. That way you can make more at the same time. If it's, it's, it's always um, um, a chat back at home. Uh, there are, uh, you know, I think in the community, there's always this, you know, as kids grow up and you have teenagers at home, you, the mother simply can't keep pace with making dosas and, uh, and adais for the children because everyone's hungry and you need to, it can only be made one at a time. So I think one way to get around that is to have two pans and, and move them around. There we are, we're done. This is good. You can hold it. So for the thin one, about four minutes, about two minutes on each side for the thin one. Yeah. It's not too bad. No. Right, going back to the curry leaf question, if you don't have curry leaves, avoid it. But if you have it, go for it. It's, it really is a taste enhancer. It matches really well, pairs really well, so. 
All right. Any did other? I miss any questions? I know. I know the the long the chat is long because of all the things I've asked you to put in here. So I'm just trying to make sure I didn't miss any questions. And uh, if you have, or when you want to eat it, I can show you. You can. <laughs> you would serve yourself a little bit of the relish on the side. And you can pinch, pinch this off like this, and you would eat it with your finger. I'll be right there for mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, guys. Go ahead and make it. Are you making it for dinner today? And any other questions? Oh. Very oh. quiet. <laughs> yeah, Priya, I, I, wanted have to... I have a question. How do you make it? Yeah. Uh, how do you make it crispier? Is the batter thinned or do you cook it longer? You cook it longer. Okay. I wouldn't recommend putting more oil, but uh, I think if you took a cast iron griddle, like, a, like you know, one of these, this is cast iron and it's a flat griddle. It's typically what we would make it on. Uh, but I would have to put it on a different hob, so I didn't do it on this today. But if you did it on this, I think achieving a crisp one side, you know, where the underside is crisp, it's much easier to, to achieve on this. Okay. Yeah. Um, but the, the ideal texture you want to achieve is crisp on one side, but soft on the other. Uh, okay. Do you hear me there? So, you know, when you, when you, when you, when you, when you put it in your mouth, you have, you, there's a complexity in texture. Right. But does it brown like the dosa? Yeah, it does turn a little brown. Uh, we can see it here. So I can show you. So, you know, this is the underside. So you can see that it's cooked. And this oh, is the okay. other side. Okay. So it's, it's kind of golden brown, but not, uh, and, and that's why it's really important to keep the heat on medium throughout the process. Don't change the heat level. Don't, don't spike it up and don't go low because if you, if you, if you keep the, the heat on low to medium, the risk is that it will not cook fast enough to be a strong enough pancake to flip. Flip, okay. And then it will tend to tear or uh, fall apart. If that happens, uh, if your ada is falling apart, there are a couple of troubleshooters here. One is try and see if your, your heat is not enough. The heat has to, up, has to be optimal. So um, I have an induction hob, so on that it would be somewhere between six and 6.5. Um, if you're using a gas flame, keep it medium and keep it steady. Um, if, uh, you know, once your heat is, uh, is steady and, it, you know, it, it, if the other is still falling apart, the next thing you need to think about it is, um, it shouldn't happen. This is a foolproof recipe, but if something happens, I don't know, it could be uh, soaking time. It could just be the variety of lentil, um, you know, especially with tour, uh, we don't use tour in this, in this recipe here, but I have noticed that tour dal and chana dal, I simply don't seem to get a consistent variety and a consistent uh, quality uh, when I buy it here in Copenhagen. I buy Natco and TRS, which are pretty standard brand selling across the, your, um, the continent. But um, somehow the quality of the lentil is very different. Sometimes the tour dal looks like chana dal really big and it doesn't cook fast enough. I mean, it really stays whole even after you've pressure cooked it for a while. So um, you really have to give, I think there's a lot of grain that comes from Canada and they are sub cultivars. Um, so it's just not the same that you're used to as children in India. Uh, my mother says it's the same problem. In India, there is also a lot of grain dumping from Canada. So there's a lot of local demand. So yeah, grains grow from elsewhere, but are fed in their native land. It's, it's complex food and politics. Oh, yeah. okay. Thank you. But uh, I also, I'm sorry, I missed the first few minutes of, of your presentation. So you did not use tuwa dal or uh, chana in your dal. So what are the I lentils? Use you I use chana dal. The, the thumb rule is uh, um, if you had a cup of dal, then you would 60% of that dal would be mung. 
and then you would uh, use 20% uh, chana and 20% percent udad. Uh, yeah, okay. Many families, if you, if you go on the internet, I can tell you, Google will probably show you 126,000 results in four, you know, 40 seconds. And um, you will probably find 20,000 different variations in that. So it's, it's really a good thing. Back home in my family, there was always this thing about moong dal being very uh, easy to digest. So it was always what we preferred. Uh, chana and, uh, and udad or black lentils definitely add that aroma to it. So it's important that you add a little bit. Yeah, yeah, really, okay. That's what I do too. too. My, my, my mother-in-law adds to her, so you can add to her too. Actually, you can add any lentil, right? For that matter, you can make your own mix. Remember to add a spoon of uh, black lentils because that's the aroma factor. Go ahead, use red lentils, make it your own. And how long did you soak the lentils for before you blended it? And did you blend it in a processor or with a hand blender? Because I came in I when you were- I used a stick blender. You use the stick blender? Yeah. Oh, okay. And I've that done that for I think, 15, 17 years now or more. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's good to know that you can use the hand blender. I think it makes cleaning easier. You just have one thing yeah, to right. clean up. It's just super easy. It's right next to where you're cooking. It's very, very practical. And how long and did you soak the lentils for? I, I soaked the lentils this morning around 11. Um, sometimes I soak it in the afternoon when I come back at four and then I have it for dinner at seven. In that case, I pour a little warm water, I'm cheating a bit, but that's a cheat sheet for you guys too. You can, you can pour a little warm water and reduce the soaking time. <laughs> so about three, four hours of soaking because the time difference is, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're so really if, welcome. Thank if you. you haven't sent where you're from, if you put in the chat where you're from, City, state, country, we would appreciate it. Thank you very much. I'm going to take a moment and share something with you guys. Um, I'm going to sh uh, share my screen here. Um, let me share it here. So I'm a food writer and food historian. Um, and, and that's what I do uh, in the evenings when I'm not having my day job. I write about food history in academic journals. And I, I'm writing a... Um, visual encyclopedia to Indian food on Instagram. So if anyone's on Instagram, uh, find me there. Um, this is my feed. I am, uh, I, can you see it? Yes. See Paula, yeah. So yes. every line is an entry. Um, I'm still doing A and we're probably 55 entries into A. For example, this is Asafoetida, and I talk about the family of different things that you know about about Asafoetida. So if you go in, there's a little bit of food history, but there's also the culture of using it, the nuances, a little bit on the. Um, in some entries, I talk more about um, where they grow and where they come from, varietals, politics, people who grow them, women involved in you know in farming, fishing, whatever. I think the posts are very different. This is the second post, and I, uh, you know, and in this case, I talk about very two very different uses. One is a pickle that's entirely based on asafoetida. It, you know, the only spice in it is asafoetida, and the other one is actually a medicine, which is warm water and asafoetida. So, you know, asafoetida can be a pickle. It can also be a therapeutic uh, a recipe. And the third post is. Uh, is a little nuanced here. I'm trying to explain what are the different kinds of asafoetida. Like the one that you saw me use today was slightly um, pasty. I don't know if anyone noticed that. And typically, when you buy them in a shop, they would be a powder. So, uh, and even in that, varieties and different brands look different. If you just poured out their asafoetida, it would look different. Why is it different? Uh, there is a good reason, and there's and, and and you should know because the quality of asafoetida and the output, the aroma that it needs to give you, the umami that it needs to give you, uh, really depends on uh, what are the adulterants they mix it with, or what is the stabilizers they uh, blend it with. You should know that. So it's a bit nerdy, it's a bit geeky, but if anyone is uh, keen on it, uh, please join me on this journey. I intend to go all the way to Z. It's a long way, but uh, I'm, I'm having fun. I wanted to show you a little bit on, on Adai because one of my earliest posts was on Adai. So Adai is actually a traditional uh, Tamil dish and the earliest mention of Adai is from the third century AD in Sangha literature. If uh, you're familiar with South Asian literature, you would know that 
the Sangam era was probably the uh, the pinnacle of Tamil literature. And um, the reference of Adai is um, as a seaside snack, a snack that was sold along you know, the beach. And it was uh, it is referred to as a small circlet um, con consisting of almost equal parts of rice and as many as four pulses. And that's the literal, uh, that's a transliteration of the poem in the Sangam literature that explains the Adai. And you can see that we haven't really deviated from that. We are very close to the original. Um, and by the sixth century, it was served as a snack. Uh, here are all the different kinds of adais that are in practice today. So we have one recipe, but then people have, you know, cultures cross, food ways cross. We take some from our neighbors, we learn, we make it our own, and then our children adopt it. And that's what has happened here. If you look at the first one, that's the adai I made for you, uh, spiced with cumin and dried red chilies. And then, and you know, chilies is just from the last 400 years. Then there is the uh, the kara ade, which is actually with fennel and garlic. So that's some inspiration. Go for it. It's spiced only with fennel, uh, fennel seeds. And then there is the milaga ade with the, the dark one here. It's spiced with black pepper and coconut pieces, small pieces of fresh coconut, cut like little teeth. Um, and then on the on the woven co um, you know plate is um, a sweet ade that we make. It's made with rice flour and jaggery, uh, made into a, a, a dough and then that's steamed and it's got little cowpea lentils in it. Um, and the one in the willow basket is actually the original ade that was mentioned in the Sangam literature. I'll show you that in a moment. And this here is uh, all the different varieties of ades that you saw in the previous picture, but laid out before I made the batter. So you can see the different uh, toppings and the spices in them if you zoomed in. What was interesting and a learning curve for me was not all the adais are actually made from lentils that are whole and soaked. Some of them that are still made are actually made from flowers. So you can try that too. Uh, it's made with lentil flowers that you would knead together like a, like a chapati dough. And then that's fried in oil, shallow fried. So that was new to me and I learned it as part of this experiment and learning. This here is an exact recreation in, in the recipes uh, from the Sangam literature. This is, there is an epithet to that line which says that vendors by the seashore who sell delicate adais are like honeycombs with fine lines. And um, if you looked at the traditional rural way of making ade, even today, is they use their fingers to create the holes into which you would put the oil. Because the, the batter is so thick that you can smear the griddle with your hand. And, um, and this is what I achieved, uh, sort of having this honeycomb-like structure. So that was that. Um, that was an entry on ade and a little bit of history there. A lot of people use ade and uh, you can, uh, as I said, eat it with onion and garlic too. Uh, that's not something that the Brahmins do, but it's very popular in Chetinad. You would eat it with fennel seeds in Chetinad. Um, in Coimbatore, where I come from, you would eat it with garlic and onions, uh, topped on, you know, sprinkled on top and then cooked. Uh, not into the batter, but sort of sprinkled on top, like a pizza basically and cooked. Yeah. And back to our kitchen here. Should we call it a day here? I think so. I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, so like I said, look us up, Atlantic Institute, South Carolina. Um, we have different programs going on, as the video showed. And um, with this, this video will be on YouTube next week, so you can watch it and pause it and cook and um, all of that. And thank you, Priya. And everybody, have a great day. Thank you. A quick question. A quick question for Priya. Yeah. Um, do you also um, have this um, uh, thing that you just showed out, showed us on Instagram on Facebook? Because I'm not an Instagram user. I haven't started putting things on Facebook, but you can just type uh, Instagram at Kukalor. My I can type my handle here on the on the chat window. And Please. the beauty of Instagram is then you don't have to be on Instagram. Sorry, one second, where's my ad? No, sorry. At cook, 
cook a lore like cook a story and my email is email at priya money.com should something not work out just call just uh, drop me a line you can just type instagram at kukalor and you can see it on your browser so you don't need to be on instagram to uh, to to see the entries thank you so much priya it was a wonderful um, demonstration thank you thank you thank you everyone thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you paula bye. bye thank you bye bye Paula, do you want me to stay or should I leave?